This is Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We're in San Jose today at the California Democratic Party Convention. And by the time this interview airs, we will have a new speaker of the California State Assembly, and he is with us right now. His name is Anthony Rendon. Congratulations. Thank you, Brad. It's quite an accomplishment. Who knew three, four years ago you would be successful in your election, and now you are the next speaker? I think no one knew other than you. Exactly. I, you I brought, did call it. I did times. call exactly. it. I did call yeah. it. Let's talk about um, Mr. and Mrs. Rendon. I don't mean Anthony and Annie. Mm -hmm. I mean your parents. Right. What do they think of all this? They're excited. The, they they think it's it's been going on for a while. Right. right. Yeah. The swearing in is on March seventh. Right. Wrapped up the election in September. So they're 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 kind of confused by the long lead. Right. They say, let's just get this. Let's just do this. And what does it mean? to you, and I asked this after having read quite um, an article in the LA Times, and I know that article, I know of what sure. I reference. That article was very moving and very compelling. I mean, I didn't even know um, your history and how, you know, you hit some bumps along the way. Sure did. But yet, wow, I mean, you're the speaker of the California State Assembly. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I grew up in a very working class environment, grade point average in school at one point was 0.83. So working in factories and warehouses, unloading trucks on the graveyard shift, and uh, the the uh, the great the greatness of California's uh, public education system, uh, community college, Cal State, right. UC. I was able to go uh, get my PhD and started a little bit late, but ended well, up. How do you do that? How do you go from a point eight three? to becoming Dr. Anthony Rendon, and how do you transfer that to 38 million Californians? You do it uh, through a lot of hard work, but right. with help too. I mean, uh, the fact that we have that higher, we have that higher education, right. the public system uh, of higher education in place is really what makes the difference for a lot of Californians, myself included. And explain how your past does inform your service in the assembly and now your leadership in the assembly. Sure, well, I mean, it's not only the fact that I attended you know, the whole higher education, public right. education system, but the fact that I worked in the nonprofit sector for sure. 20 years, running early childhood education programs, running gang reduction programs, I understand sort of what happens on the ground with people who provide a lot of the services that we help to fund in the state. And so, what do you hope to achieve during your tenure as speaker? and a tenure that will likely be much longer than the last, I don't know, 10 speakers we've had, because you're in a regime now where you can stay in this body for 12 years. Right. Uh, starting in 1996, I think it was, the tenure was six years max. Sure, exactly, yeah, again, I'm part of the 12 year class, right. so we, we're gonna be there for a while, but I think the way you're successful, the way I was successful as a student, was right. every day, take every day as it comes, you sort of plan a year at a year at a time sure. to make sure you focus on the job at hand, and that's what we're going to do. But the fact that we get to be there so long means we get to focus on things like infrastructure. Right. It means we get to work on things like sort of rebuilding our university sure. system. We get to work on a lot of long-term infrastructural things, and that's exciting. Mm -hmm. I know you're you, and you're just you, but you are making history in that you are heading the assembly at a time when your counterpart in the Senate is also of Latino descent. Right. What does that mean to you, if anything? What does it mean to California, if anything? Right. It means that the legislature itself, the, the leadership, is uh, more representative of the population of the state than ever before. But I think what's more important about whether or not it's significant that Kevin right. and I are Latino, I think what's more important is the fact that Kevin and I are folks, you know, we're both leaders who reach out to other communities, who work with other caucuses, who work with other parties. I think that's more significant and ultimately that's what's going to be better for the state than anything. And how do you work with other communities? I don't just mean ethnic communities. Sure. I mean um, interest groups right. in the best sense when, look, we have a democratic majority in this state. Right. You may hit supermajority status at a certain point. Right. You know, th that type of power can be intoxicated, right. but you still want to be able to represent all of California, even the most right-wing corner right. of the state, presumably. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, I think the best example of that mm. for me and for, for mm. our class was the water bond. Mm. I did uh. 18 public hearings throughout uh, 
the year and a half that we worked on the water bond, we started in Coachella, 18 public hearings up the state, all the way to Redding and Eureka, mm. all sorts of topographies, all sorts of different economies, all sorts of political ideologies. That bill ended up, we had one no vote from the Republicans, one no vote from the mm. Democrats. We worked in, to try to get every single vote and, and uh, you know, I think that's the kind of leadership that we want to And provide. so talk to me about how you plan to work with Chad Mays, who is the GOP leader in yeah. the California State Assembly. Nice guy, young. Great guy, you know, good I mean, friend. Yeah, yeah he, was, he gave one of the nominating speeches nice. uh, uh -huh. when I was elected speaker. Right. Uh, Chad has the same challenges that I do. Right. We, have very, we have very diverse, uh, very diverse caucuses and right. trying to make sure that we're all on the same page is, is a tough job, but I mean, he's, he's up for the challenge but for I'm sure. But I'm wondering if the fact and maybe I'm making too much of it. You know, you're both around the same age. He may be younger, but, younger. You know, okay, yeah. but you get my point. I mean, generationally, you have right. the same pretty bunch of references, right. and, or maybe he has, you know, full house. Saved by the bell. Saved by the bell. By the bell. But, but, yeah. but I mean, is that is that invaluable? I think it is. I think mm -hmm. it is. I think just our personal relationship mm -hmm. is invaluable. Let's say Chad is five to ten years okay. younger than me. When I was teaching those, when I was teaching the university, sure. I was teaching the folks sort of from that generation. Right. What I discovered was they tend to be less ideological than folks from my generation or previous generations. They focus on results and they focus on sort of the the the, the validity of the various right. arguments. So here we are at the California Democratic Party convention. Yep. A lot of excitement. Vice President Biden will be speaking. We're heading into our June primary, into our November general election. Um, what we see recently, statistics released from the Secretary of State, that in terms of Democratic registration, Democratic registration is essentially flat, Republican registration is down, decline to state is up. Mm -hmm. I guess flat's better than down, right. but how do you grow the Democratic base? Well, that's, that, that sort of harkens back to what I was talking about earlier. This next generation is, again, less ideological, less mm -hmm. interested in party labels. They're interested in results. They don't really care if someone's a Democrat or a right. Republican or a conservative or a liberal. They want us to accomplish, they want us to accomplish right. things, and that's what's really important. Uh, so I think that's how you appeal to right. folks, is you make sure you get things done. Again, working on infrastructure, working right. on our education system making sure that we're that we're not focused on arguing with not one another but focused on getting stuff done. And when you think about the Democratic voting bloc now, and I'm going to make a presumption that Hillary Clinton is the nominee. Right. I don't know if you've endorsed her, but have you endorsed her? I have endorsed okay. her. Okay. So presume she's the nominee. She's done fairly well among various interest groups, women, Latinos, uh, African Americans. The youth have not been behind her as much. And what we know from voting patterns and voting trends Democrats win when the young vote. Absolutely. How are you, as a leader of the Democratic Party, going to get the young who've been supporting uh, Mr. Sanders, Senator Sanders, to go out in November and support the presumed nominee, right. Hillary Clinton? I think the way you do that is to draw the clear contrast. No matter who the Republican uh, nominee is, right. there are going to be clear contrasts between he and, I assume, right. uh, and Ms. Clinton. Mm -hmm. um, and you just draw, you focus on those contrasts, focus on those differences, and, and, and draw them out. And let's make another presumption that Mr. Trump is a nominee. Right. Do you think that in California at least, his apparent unpopularity, I'm just looking at the polls, right. could actually cause a groundswell of Democratic pickups that one would not anticipate? I would, I would hope so. I know you'd <laughs> hope so, but let's really, you know, right. let's not dream. Right. Do you think that he could be that damaging? Again, I'm not yeah. saying my position, I'm just wondering. Right. No, I think that's very much possible. Mm -hmm. What often happens in California, just because of our time zone, right. just because we know oh, where right. we're going to end up, right. a lot of folks end up not going out, ah. particularly in the last couple of hours. I could see a lot of people showing up just for a, a protest vote against Trump, and that could be helpful for us. Okay, his name is Anthony Rendon. He is about to be the Speaker of the California State Assembly. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We're in San Jose at the California Democratic Party Convention. This is Charter Local Edition.